So, nine. but oh, we're well, live. That's uh, a nine. Okay, that's a nine. Yeah, it's a so, completion. Yeah, so this is the nine hundred twenty-seven. <laughs> this is the nine hundred twenty-seven show, and but I, I'm really excited about this one because I asked you, and I know you. You like I said, you know, you were like, uh, and I totally get it, man. You put so much time, effort in, and 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 I and I was like, hey, you know, somebody get this touch with Greg Prescott. This is like last, last. When was this? Two summers ago? Well, last summer. Last summer. Mm -hmm. And I think we, we exchanged messages. You're like, no, that's not my gig, right? Yeah, I'm an and introvert. Then you, <laughs> yeah, then you, right? And then you you and Michelle, and I would watch your stuff. I'd go back and watch some of your stuff. And so then you and Michelle came on. That was very cool. And we got a great response from that. And then um, I, I saw you break out, man. I saw you break out in the energetic fields. I saw you come out like about two weeks ago, maybe even longer. But like he's he's there he is you know and i'm like on youtube it popped up like and then the next day there he is and then the next day i'm like oh shit he's back you know yep. and then i'm listening to what you're saying and i'm like okay this is this is go hey who's from south texas i'm from corpus christi corpus christi texas michelle whitfield cool very cool all right let me let me uh, get this on here okay so i don't know if we'll just we're gonna wrap as we usually do i'll formally roll the show out in a minute i'm sorry i'm just over here. sure no problem it's, it's just espresso I'm drinking. <laughs> I stuck espresso. I, I stuck espresso. That's what I was talking to him last night. Um, I stuck it in the coffee pot. I was talking to him last night. I'm like, hey, you know, what can I do? I had a visitation last night. We're just having an off, off program conversation in front of everybody. And I said to him, what can I do? What more can I do? And they're like, and, and they said, well, you're doing it. You know, you're doing it. And I said, well, how can I expand, you know, my vibration and, 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 and my love and my wisdom and, and my efforts and, you know, whatever. Da, da, da. And they just said, man, you know, uh, you're doing it. A lot of you guys are doing it. You're not giving yourself enough credit. Um, but if you want to do it, go back to what we told you seven years ago when you walk in the street. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And they're like, well, there's one source, one golden rule, you know perfect order and you're all one unique and equal soul like each fractal has its own life experience right but they're all the same and they're all connected beehive intelligence and all that and they just said look if somebody doesn't make you feel good you need that's where you start if somebody doesn't make you feel good bring them in your heart and and and, and they're like todd you've done that before and i'm like yeah yeah yeah. Well, and I'm, I'm like i think i'm doing pretty good they're like, hey they're not judging you just okay think about your mother and i'm like Oh, okay. I got more work to do. Think about this person. Okay. And just keep going, keep going. And it was like really basic information. Cause I'm like going, Hey, what's happening? What's fixing to happening? The equinox is coming and can you give me some Intel. <laughs> and they're like, man, you got it all wrong, dude. So it was pretty trippy. Let me pull this up so I can see the comments. 77 people in the house. This is a really special show. Uh, how much time you got? Greg. I'm open for however long okay. it goes. Okay, I, right. I usually go. I usually go an hour, but uh, I'm good. I'm, I'm I'm open to sound is good. Okay, so let me just say hello to a few people: Crystal Dawn Hill, Richard Shooping, Candy Lewis, Beth Buslash, Bush. I hope I said that right. Jody Lee's in the house. Diane Richards, Lynn Anderson, uh, Sh Shanine. <laughs> I, I hope I got it right. Shanine Banrion, who's doing a, a talk show now. That's it's it's straight up it's good angie parker candy lewis christine donnelly april lord sarah adams and i'll stop there with 82 people because i can't keep up <laughs> thank you all for, <clears throat> thank you all for coming to this very special episode uh <laughs> anna arena says todd just call us all bill yeah that'd be easy so <laughs> this, is, this is a very special episode you know as everybody knows morgan went back to australia to, to um to be there for the birth of her first grandchild and we, and we, um, and also give us time to work out a permanent visa thing. And, uh, but when, before she left, she loaded up the calendar with like 80, 80 programs in the month of March. And so, uh, I haven't been doing my normal spontaneous, uh, call somebody up and say, Hey, you want to do a show the next day <laughs> or that day? So I hit Greg up and, uh, and he was like, yeah. And the reason I hit Greg up is because, Everyone knows Greg's been doing this a long, long time, okay? And, you know, so everybody knows about N5D and the other things that he's he's done, his collaborations with 
his very good friend, Michelle Walling and other people, you know, and, uh, and so I noticed that Greg and Michelle came on uh, about three months ago, I think, and we had a great show. And then, and that was really the first time because I'd asked Greg to come on a couple of times and I try to get people to get him to come on. And he was kind of like incubating. And so after that show though, you know, it was cool. He came out, we had a great show. And then about, I don't know, two, three, four weeks ago, I see him start popping up YouTube, Facebook almost every day. Right. And the subject matter. Right. But I always look at the intention, you know, and that's what I see. And anyone that knows Greg, it's like his heart is out there. He's just like, he's a fucking warrior, man. He's just a heart warrior. Right. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to hit Greg up. So, so formally, Everybody, if you don't know Greg Prescott, this is Greg Prescott. Thank you, Greg, for sharing space with us today and honoring us with your presence and having a spontaneous, intuitive, creative, imaginative, <laughs> creative moment with Todd and Soul Speaks 5D. Welcome to the show. My Thank pleasure, you, brother. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And I jo enjoy the work that you're doing and you're giving a voice to so many people that, you know, the way I see it in this genre, you know, they're, they're, you have the big names that are out there, but you know what? No one's name is any bigger than anyone else's. Everyone has great stories. You just told a fantastic story oh before uh, we came <laughs> on live here. Uh, you know, everyone's got these amazing stories. So I, I want to thank you for giving all these people a platform to get their voice out on. Well, you're very welcome. And let me just say on behalf of everybody, <laughs> You know, there were people, there were, there are way showers and then there's way showers, way showers. And, it, and everybody's got a piece of the, of the universal infinite jigsaw puzzle. And in this mission or this realm, for sure. And that's where I'm totally with you on, you know, there's some people that have bigger names and people write me and they'll say, Hey, you should get Till Swan on. I'm like, you know her or get so-and-so on, you know, him. Uh, and the way I look at it, you know, this, it, it's a grassroots organic thing, you know, it, it's the 99.99%. And I don't, tr to be honest with you, I don't trust half of the well-known people out there anyway, because there's so much, there's been so much psyops put out there, you know? But yeah. Anyway, what I was going to say is that, you know, certain people in certain, on certain lanes of the soul highway, broke down energetic doors. And I think you're one of those people, you know, because I appreciate that. Thank you. You know, so you, someone, someone does something and then some, Hey, I can do that. And you, you know what I'm talking about? So yeah. Wow, yeah. So many subjects that, and in it, for any of you who don't aren't familiar with Greg, you can find him on YouTube uh, in 5d uh, and also on Facebook. And he's doing, he's doing some very consistent um, programming right now. And, it, and he offers uh, a really broad based uh, experience. He did a lot of research over the years. Uh, he's, he's actually, if you go back into the archives, he's interviewed some, some people that are, you know, very well known people and on a variety Jordan of Maxwell, subjects. Dolores Cannon. Yeah. 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 Absolutely, man. So, you know, he's like, uh, I don't know, man. He's like, he's like the, uh, like, like on Mount Olympus, <laughs> Mount Olympus of the Ascension. <laughs> Well, but you, you know, it, yeah. So there's a lot of stuff. I'm to watching. Talk about. <laughs> You're yeah, right. He's watching. He's Zeus. And look at him, man. He's 60 years old, right? So, no, you know, I, no I, turned 50, I turned 59 in October. Uh, oh, so 50, 60 next year. Yeah. Okay. I, I saw Close. that. Yeah. I'm, I'm 50. Yeah. You turned 59. So I turned 57 in December. So yeah. Like two yep. hit him. Hey, but I'm looking at you. Yeah, I saw that post you did that. Hey, I'm, I guess you said I'm almost 60. Yes. And I'm like, yeah. dude, man. I turned 60 on? next year. Yeah. What is he doing, man? I mean, I'm uh, over here falling apart, man. I can't even walk up the stairs. I'm kidding. Lots of grounding, lots of meditation. You know, I, I, where I live, I live in Siesta Key. And we have this 99.9% .9 quartz crystal sand. So I think that does a, mm. a number too. Yeah. So I don't know where we want to start, man. But I think probably probably where we should start is the solar flash the event yeah uh, yeah you know that's the, huge da, 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 da. i mean it, you know i mean uh, what is it <laughs> okay i mean like what's going matter on matter of fact okay well i have an article um that i'm going to be putting out tomorrow and it's going to talk about this vision i had about the event and i had this vision gosh back I don't know, 2016 or something like that. And I wrote about it as an 
as an addendum to someone else's article. I just put it at the end, but I thought, you know what? I don't have anything out there. And I've gotten so much more information since then. I think that's yeah. the reason why I had to wait until now to put out this article. Um, in this vision, I saw myself, it was a third eye meditation I was doing. And I saw myself standing in front of myself and that all of a sudden this white flash just floods the earth. Mm. And when that happens, the only thing you'll feel is a love to a magnitude you've never experienced before. And the only way I can describe it is to imagine the thing, the person that you love the most, for me, it's my daughter, Brittany. Yeah. Multiply that by a million times and I'm under, underestimating it. Multiply that by a million times. That's the kind of love you're gonna feel when this white flash floods the earth. All third dimensional bullshit is gone. You know, mm. money, government, religion, you know, if your boss is an asshole, it doesn't matter. You can't even find the energy to be upset when you feel that kind of love that comes with this light that comes in. Now, this is all tied into what's happening right now with the sun. You're old enough to remember this. And I'm sure there's a lot of people that are listening right now that remember seeing the yellow sun when we were younger, right? Yeah. I never yeah. About that. Yeah. And now the sun... It started changing probably in the late 80s, early 90s. Mm. Coincidentally, that's when all the planets in our solar system started going through different climate changes, all of them yeah. on record. And what's happening is we're entering the photon belt. And we just entered the outer edges back then. That's what started to turn the sun from yellow to white. Yeah. And that's where we're at now. And as we continue further into the photon belt, which is a 2000 year belt. It takes 2000 years to go through that belt. We're just on the very outer edge of it right now. That's transforming the sun. That's sending out these photons and magnifying those phot photons. Now, I did a, um, a beach walk at the beginning of February and I saw this, I, I stopped and I just felt I had to meditate in this one spot and I stopped and there's, you know, there's, it's Siesta Key, we're the number one beach in uh, the United States. Um, so I stopped and I meditated and there's thousands of people around me, but I, I do this third eye meditation and then it's so simple to do. Um, th there's a link on N5D for it. You can do it within seconds, honestly, it's so simple. Um, but I, I did this third eye meditation on the beach and I saw that I got this vision of concentric rings pulsating from the sun and coming to the earth, bam, 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 mm -hmm. nonstop. And so I told the person I was with on the beach that day, I told her about it, but I didn't tell anyone else about it. A few days later, I'm doing a beach walk and I decided, okay, it's time to talk about it. And I put it out there. The next day I decided to do a beach walk and I, I did a Facebook live on that day too. And I put it out there as well. And while I'm talking about that, our mutual friend, Rosie Neal, calls me while I'm doing my Facebook Live. I so I called her. I saw that. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I called her that. afterwards. Hey. I called her afterwards. And um, she had she wasn't watching. She didn't know anything about my dream. But she had the same dream, the same or, yeah. excuse me, vision. She had the yeah. same vision that I had at the same time. And it, 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 it's confirmation. When I get stuff like that, yeah. just like the white light, um, I had an N5D beach meetup uh, a few years ago, and this nurse was there who had a near-death experience. And she was saying that in her near-death experience, she experienced the same thing, that white light flooding the planet, that feeling of unconditional love to a magnitude you can't put into words. Yeah. So when Rosie gave me that confirmation, I knew it. And I put out an article about that as well on N5D. And then all of a sudden I got started getting flooded with pictures of people. You could see behind them concentric rings yeah. of light coming in behind them. Yeah. And it's all over. It's it, it. The more people are putting it out there, the more it's coming to free, uh, fruition. Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, I remember. Uh, yeah, I remember what you're saying about the yellow sun. I never thought about that before. Yeah, I, I was thinking about this the other day or I've thought about this several times. I also remember uh, being five, six, seven, eight years old, laying in my front yard like a kid would do in the grass, looking at the sky, like, what the hell is all this, you know? The clouds, and I'm not talking about chemtrails either. I'm talking yeah, about yeah. the clouds. The clouds are, are vastly different than yes. they used to be. 
as well. Uh, I had an experience, uh, it would have been the previous February. So you're talking February this year? Is Correct. When that happened? Yeah, yeah, I had experience the previous February. I was in Connecticut and it was around something. I don't remember. I don't keep up with all that stuff. But I went on a walk out in this in this uh, preserve and it was cold as hell. I remember that, but it was sunny and clear. And I looked and, and I and I filmed it because what happened was I looked up at the sun and I could see like it almost looked like the earth, like with continents, you know, it had like little pieces of blue in it. And I was looking at it and I just hit and this was with my eyes open and I hit that equal, you know, that that uh, that integration or whatever you want to call it, I connected and, and I don't even know what I was saying. And then this, then the sun turned like this magenta pink and exploded into my head, right? Like it, I came out like rainbow uh, from the magenta pink into my head. And I thought, holy shit, I didn't just imagine that, you know? And then I, then I thought, okay, well, I went and smoked a cigarette and came back. I was like, I mean, let me see if I can do it again. But I flipped the camera on and I walked over there and the same thing happened. That was trippy. You know, there's been some trippy stuff going on. So you caught that on film. I didn't, I didn't, I, I didn't film it. And I don't know if other people would have been able to see. I didn't even think about that. Right. I was saying, right. I'm going to try this again. And, and it, and it happened, but yeah, it was, it was actually something that, that a lot like last night, you know, it was, it was something that like kind of wobbled me in that moment. You know, but I, and I you, was doing you brought it up too about you know the clouds are changing and stuff like that. There was a there's a woman I think her name is Gina Colvin Hill or something like that. She made a post of a picture she took at night where it's of the moon, but you can see rainbow clouds around the moon. Now Rosie Rosie Neal has an article on N5D where she's talking about you're going to see rainbows everywhere, and all of a sudden people are reporting this. You know everywhere we're starting to see these rainbows popping up. Yeah, uh, you know, um, that's that's I've I've seen quite a few times uh, the rainbows around the moon. And then when mm -hmm. Morgan was here for three months uh, here in Kauai, we actually saw we were we would like, you know, go to the mountain, connect with the beans, come out. And there'd be a double rainbow. But what was really cool is on two occasions uh, we were we were out at the beach. We said we got to go to the beach. We just got to go stand by the beach for a few minutes. We turned around. And there was like there was like a double rainbow. There was a double rainbow, and there was a bridge across. It looked like oh, one wow. of the rainbows. Yeah, there was looked like like one of the rainbows was pregnant, and then there was like a beam going across. We we're both a literal like, rainbow bridge. Wow. Yes, and then another time, what happened was, and I've seen people report this: they will have like a cloud, and there'll be like a rainbow inside of it, but it won't. It'll just be like a shape. It won't be. Yeah, a yeah, rainbow. yeah. I've seen that. Yeah, yeah. Some Did of that makes me wonder if that's part of, a, uh, you know, the chemtrails or a harp or something like that. But you never know with what's going on right now. It's uh, what we're witnessing is really unprecedented. I know it is, and I think, like you said, the more we talk about it and the more it's put out there, the more it becomes, you know, permeated into our consciousness and our belief system and all that. Did you see the? Uh, did you see the pictures? Her, uh, Morgan and I put up. And it would have been, uh, God, what was it? Uh, was it December? Was it the, the solstice maybe? Yeah, I think it was right around the solstice uh, just uh, in December. And there was a portal in the sky, and we put up like 30 pictures of it. Oh, like I didn't we see were, that. I got to we check were, it out. We were, yeah, this was crazy. Uh, so we were sitting there, and we are going through. I mean, we have been on the island for like, uh, actually like three. No, it would have been January, I guess. I don't remember. Because we've been here like six or eight weeks, and we went through initiations. I mean, we we were like doing. I mean, it was just one thing after another. We're bouncing around. We're living hand to mouth, and then then all of a sudden everything changed. And these these friends said, "Hey, you guys are cool. Why don't you come uh, do a house sit and cat sit at our house?" So we go over there, and we're like, "Man, we just need to chill, right?" So we start watching movies. I never watch movies. We're watching Interstellar, right? <laughs> watching yeah. Interstellar. We're both like recuperating from the, these massive uh, elevations and all that. I'm looking across the way and they have a cottage and we had stayed there for three days. That's how we met these people. And all the doors start opening and closing. Right. <laughs> and we're looking at it and I'm like, hey, uh, look at this. And she's like, 
uh, that did do that when we were there and it was very windy. I'm like, yeah, and these are screen doors, right? Mm -hmm. So we're like, okay, what's the message here? And we're watching interstellar with dimensions and, you know, uh, observing yourself and all that. So I walk outside and I look up in the sky and there is a wrecked Now there's clouds all across the moon's way over on the other side of the horizon. And there is a rectangle, perfect, perfect lines all the way around. And I'm thinking, Oh, that's fucking weird. Hey, Morgan, come here. That thing was there for two hours. It had depth to it. There was a light on the on the top of it that was coming out on one side because it wasn't the moon. We took all these pictures of it, and dude, it was it was legit. And then we got we did it. We did a meditation the the, the next day because we were so freaked out, and we connected with it, and it and it gave us and it was basically telling us uh, that all these new uh, I say new, uh, an entire, uh, all these new skills and abilities were, were coming, you know, we're, we're coming to the earth and we're here and they were now, you know, just walk. It, it was, it was amazing. But these are the type of anomalies that are occurring around the world. You know? Yeah. Yeah. We're seeing all these like sheets of clouds and perfect squares or trapezoid shaped clouds. You don't see that stuff. We never saw that stuff when we were kids. Mm -mm. You know, really bizarre things are happening right now. Um, it's almost as if, you know, it's, it's, we're walking in between dimensions. Do you ever feel that way? Like you go yes. to the grocery store and you see a bunch yes. of stuff walking around, but you make eye contact with somebody that's real and you don't have to say a word to them, yeah. but you just know that, okay, this person's awake. You might smile or nod at them and, but everyone else is like a zombie or, you know, an and NPC or, <laughs> It, yeah. And you know what? The, in that night I was telling you about, but with the uh, portal, that's what they told us. It was a portal, a doorway. Uh, we actually, that's what happened. We actually, we both said we were walk. We just walked into another dimension. And then after that, so many times driving around the island, I'd be driving in the car. I'd be driving the car and she's next to me and she's talking to me. I'm like, don't talk to me, man, because I feel like I'm in a bubble in a tunnel. And I'm like, yeah. what is happening? And we would hit a part of the island and then everything would shift and change, you know? And yeah, so totally. And then like, uh, like two weeks ago, I went to the grocery store, like you're talking about, and it was trippy. I felt like I was, I felt like I was walking in some kind of video game. And then I see this one dude and he walks up to me and he's like, Hey, uh, are you from here? I'm like, no. He says, well, you know, the island called you here. And I'm like, what? dude. You know, yeah, yeah. He's like the island called you. He was he was a local guy, and, and I. This is the second time this has happened to me since I've been here, since uh, late October. And he's like the island called you here, and I'm like, uh, you know, thinking is this dude on crack? You know, or is he you know on ice or something? And he says, no, no, no. The mother called you here. You know, I'm like, okay. Wow. And but like and like he said, and when he made the eye contact with me, I just remembered this right now. I just actually remember this. But yeah, you're right. It's like we're walking. We we're flipping. A little bit back and forth like the you know, and, it, and that that really explains you know the mandela effect we're all familiar with that we've seen so many hundreds of examples of it and what it's really showing us is how timelines are converging into basically one major timeline i know that a couple of years ago i was driving back home this is when i wasn't i wasn't living on the the beach for a year but um i was driving back home and i always make this one turn at this one there's a VFW on the corner. I always make my turn right there. And uh, I make my turn. I'm going down the street. All of a sudden, the street changed. I was not on the same street anymore. And I thought, oh, my God, I'm, I'm living the Mandela effect right now. I'm yeah. watching yeah. these timelines converge. I was on a completely different street. Yeah. Never yeah. happened yeah. before. Yeah. I, 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 have a, I have a friend that lives... 15 miles on the north side of the island, right? And so uh, a few days after Morgan left, I ran up there just to have a visit, right? And so when I drove up there, which would be about a 20 minute ride, right? It took, it, it was like it literally like five minutes. And I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. you know, maybe I was just, you know, maybe I was just like <laughs> on the way back, it took like, it, it felt like it took like two hours. I was driving and, and a similar thing happened. So I was driving and it's not that, you know, you drive this road a few times and you know it. Right. So I was driving behind uh, right by this particular village or little little town or whatever you want to call it. And I drove by it because I because I was told if anytime you go through this town, they're all locals. Be careful. Drive the speed limit because the cops are there. And I did. 
And then I went on down the road. And then the next thing I know, I'm driving through it again. And I'm like, oh, no, no, no. I know I drove through this already, right? <laughs> so it was very similar to that, yeah. Huh? It's crazy. It was very similar to what you're talking about, but I wasn't on a different street. I went by the same place twice, though. It's yeah, crazy. it's crazy. So I'll tell you, you know, lately I've been, what I've been doing is uh, I've been working on, well, this, I've been working on my DNA for so long. I've been focusing on, you know, according to the research of Greg Braden, we only have 20 of the 64 codons turned on in our DNA. And I'm thinking, okay, if somebody can figure out how to turn on the remaining 44 codons, they can do anything. You can tell, you can teleport, you can manifest out of thin air, you can do anything, make yourself invisible, wipe your hand in front of your face and look like you're 12 again. And back again like that and you're the same age you are you can live for as long as you want you can do anything if you can figure out the the mystery of turning on all the codons in your dna so what i started doing was um a lot of affirmations i i even made a glass that has a sigil on there um that says all of my codons are open i have a picture on my refrigerator of me when i was younger in my teens underneath it there's binary code that says all of my codons are open uh, when I when I make uh, water, I'll, I'll make a glass of ozone alkaline water, and when I'm putting the ozone in there, I'll spin it around in a circle and say all my codons are open. Then I'll spin, uh, spin it around backwards, and I'll use a reversal saying Nipo era Snodak Yimpola, which is all my codons are open. So what I, I end up to that. <laughs> just say that. that instantly, instantly, yeah. But it, you know, it, it's been a work in progress. I'm basically using myself as a guinea pig. Uh, for my yeah. DNA. Uh, so uh, the latest thing I did, and, and you can find this on the N5D YouTube channel, is I made a, a mantra. And that's what I listen to when I'm doing my, my walk of gratitude on the beach. And basically all it says is all the beneficial codons in my RNA and DNA are now open. I can do anything. I promise to only use these new abilities responsibly in humanity's best interest. Now, and, and that works, that's the perfect mantra, but I'm gonna make a new one that also includes something that I just learned because they, there was a re, uh, some research that just came out. I think it was on a tapeworm or some kind of worm where they actually turned off a codon, not on, but they turned it off and it ended up living like two to three times longer than what it normally would. And not only that, but its offspring also did that. So. What I'm going to add to that is um, all the beneficial codons in my DNA and RNA are now open and all the non-beneficial ones are now closed. Yeah. And I'm gonna add that to the mantra and I'll put that up on, on YouTube. It'll be an hour long mantra with ambient music in the background. It's free, just listen to it. And if you want, make your own, uh, put your own incantations in there, do whatever you want to do, but somebody's gotta figure this out. And that person that does it, you know, if it's me, the first thing I'm going to do is lay my hands down on Mother Earth and heal the air, water, food supplies, and anything else she needs to be healed. And then I'm going to hook my higher self up with every everyone else's higher self. And if there's anybody that needs healing, they're going to be healed instantly. And this can all be done in less than a minute, all of it, if somebody can yeah. figure out how to do that. Yeah, you know, you know, uh, Morgan calls that copy and paste. And I never understood what she was saying, copy and paste. <laughs> And I said, what, what do you mean? You, you mean if you have something opened in you, you can then in turn open it to somebody else. Well, you certainly can send the, and I think this is where we're getting to is this whole, this whole, uh, uh, you know, using, you, you know, using the imagination, what we would call the imagination, which is really not, you know, which really falls short for what it really is. Right. And, and that's, that's it. You know, you're right. You, you know, if you have something, anyone else can have it especially if you're giving it because i think that's part of the, that's part of this whole elevation and expansion is 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 not hoarding anything there's no possession there's no trademark no copyright there's no right. contract but when you just give that that is that is supported by the universal energy you know so that and that's what i always say i don't care if you're in front of 100 people or you're in a room by yourself just you and the universe that hard intention is felt through the entire realm and really through all through all dimensions all, all universes yeah. right it's funny i was mentioning also that walk of gratitude that i do and once again there's an article there's an article for like everything on n5d but i do this walk of gratitude and in my walk i i'll, I'll it's really short if, if i may i'll just say what i usually say and 
We got plenty of time. Uh, awesome. I, well, this is what I say on my walk of gratitude. Dear creator, source, universe, spirit guides, guardian angels, friends and family on both sides of the veil, galactic neighbors and friends, higher self, mother earth. I'm sorry if I don't say this as often as I should. Please forgive me. Thank you for your abundance and everything that's good in life as I promise to listen with open eyes, ears, mind, and heart. I ask that you help me turn on all the beneficial codons in my DNA and RNA, as well as activate all past, current, and future strands of beneficial DNA so I can heal myself and others in humanity's best interests. More than anything, I love you all so very much. So I'm incorporating Ho'oponopono into that as well. And what I do is I have this all written out on N5D and I encourage anyone to take what I have and turn it around, add to it, take away from it, whatever it is that you want to do, because the more that people do this, put that gratitude out there, the better this world is going to be. You know, And you notice I don't use the word God. I, I don't include archangels or Jesus in there. It's my own different beliefs. Um, but I encourage anyone that does include it, whoever and whatever you want in there and make it yours. Own it. Own it. Yeah. And, own it. Yeah. That's right. Own it. That's what's that's what's been coming in. Uh, well, two things have been coming in for me and Morgan and I when she was here. Uh, and they've just been expanded since she's left, which is basically when I connect, like even last night, they told me, they said, uh, what do you need? Uh, be specific because you, you just just name it. What do you need? Which is a tricky question to answer from the universe because it's like, oh, well, I need ten dollars. I was actually laying there in bed last night thinking, well, my rent's due tomorrow. I need ten dollars. <laughs> I'm at three ninety and it's four hundred, you know. And I've got the I've got that part of it down, guys. You know, I told him I said I got that down. I let go and it comes when I need it. And and I, you know, I was kind of joking with him, but but that's the one thing I got. And then the other thing I got that we we've been getting is to own it, like. Like I, it came out yesterday and I put it up in a post, I think I can't remember. And it was like, own it or be owned. It's real simple. And I said, well, what do you mean? You know, like, cause I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about everything. I'm thinking of all dimensions. I'm thinking uh, uh, Anunnaki, reptilians, archons, controllers, this, that, this, that known and unknown. And they said, real simple. Look, you can, you are a free, sovereign soul in any dimension, any place, any time, if you have the awareness and be okay, you can either, no matter what it is, no matter what it is, whether it's an, a non-physical or physical belief or whatever, or person or whatever place, whatever, you can either give your power up or you can maintain your power. And, uh, and I'm like, wow. And it's a lot like what you just said. Here's my gift to the world. Here's this invocation that I use when I walk on the beach. Go in and, and, and use it or remix it, you know, which is what me and uh, August, uh, Augusti were talking about yesterday. You know, we're like we're like the Akashic record with our experience of living in these incarnations. So that's, you know, A plus B equals what? It's a remix of everything that's come before us. We're writing, we're writing the new blueprint. Another thing too is people have to be conscientious of what you ask for, what you put out there. Um, like for example, on my walk of gratitude, I ask for abundance and everything that's good in life. If you ask for abundance, you might have an abundance of shit. <laughs> so yeah. be careful what you put out there. You know, you want yeah. an abundance of everything that's good in life. And that's one thing I always talk to, you know, when I when I call on my posse, you know, creator, source, universe, right down the right down the panel there. I always say, show me something that's going to make my jaw drop. And I've seen so many things in my life, and I'm sure you have too, as well as many of the people that are are watching right now, that yeah, have sorry. that would make most people's jaws drop. But my jaw mm -hmm. hasn't dropped yet. I, I'm telling you, five Pleiadians could land in my living room right now while we're doing the show. I'd be like, hey, be with you in a minute. It still wouldn't make my yeah. jaw drop. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I get that, and and you know, uh, and we've been talking about this on the shows. Uh, you know, I was telling you about that circle, that circle thing, uh, the the monad that, mm -hmm. and we've talked about it. But at the same time, we had seen uh, both of us, right? Seen a little gray pop in, right? Wow. Like there was a bunch, of, but one stepped up, and so you know, we we dealt with that. And then two nights before she left, we've been on this whole journey of of remembering sacred sexuality and it doesn't look anything like 
what you know 3d right it's like this it's we had to like start like all holding your hands up and touching each other and making oh, that yeah. connection and all kind of, like the first time we ever laid down together the first time she came a year and a half two years ago i put my hand on her back and i didn't even know what was gonna i just put my hand on her back the next thing i know it started going from the crown down through all of her chakras soulgasms you know i don't know how else to explain it you know what i mean but anyway so two nights before she left we've been on this journey you know backdrop and i as a man you know was had to strip down all my no power left and then start all over like i don't even know what to do and so it's been a journey so it's like two nights before she's leaving and i'm like man i'm I, you know what man i'm i gotta you know we, i gotta connect with her so we we're, we're getting to this point and i'm like oh this is about to go down and then all of a sudden i looked down at her back and it was it was uh like hieroglyphics like light language was on her back a sacred geometry it was all moving around i'm like holy shit this is what and, and then i started getting you know and i really got it more later you're receiving straight code through your divine feminine you know from the source this is what this is about and i'm like okay i got it you know and like i was there but what happened was i turned to my left and there was uh there was a short gray standing on the bed like i'm on my knees right and i turn he's about the same height and and I was like, so, you know, what's up with that? Hey, you little you? what are you doing here? <laughs> like, what's up with that? like, what's this? He said, well, I'm here assisting you. The masculine energy is being, uh, uh, being uh, like, like uh, cleansed. Like the, the, the masculine is being cleansed. It's in, and so I'm assisting in that. And you're just a copy of what's going on collectively. But we're also here observing you. And, and we, to me, meant like like the universe, like the universe was, was learning from us, a universal family. And I said, what do you mean? They said, he said, well, the human, the human species is bringing to the table how to take emotion and inject it into the create, cre creation, into the creative process, basically. And I was like, whoa, yeah, you know, it made a lot of sense. But, you know, these things are happening all over the place. There's a lady coming on on um, the 25th who's been filming uh, UFOs, basically. Like she's just everywhere, she, you know, she's she's constantly filming these UFOs. You and know, what you were saying about that emotion, we take emotion for granted. We are, according to uh, Dolores Cannon, she said that we are the, the galactic royalty of the multiverse, basically, because of our DNA. There's so many races that don't understand emotion. They don't know. As a matter of fact, Dolores was saying that two of the things that the extraterrestrials love are watching movies and watching sports because of the gamut of emotions that we display. Um, yeah, like yeah. your favorite team scores a touchdown in football, you know, with, yeah, or you get pissed off, screw them, you know, what? Yeah. and they get a kick out of watching that because not everybody has these emotions that we have here in this third dimensional yes. incarnation. That's exactly what I got from, from this, this little brother, you know, that's uh -huh. exactly what I got. Like the, he, in other words, he was saying, we don't do that. We don't, I, I don't, we don't have that. We don't have that, you know? And, and I agree with what you're saying. I've many times received that we're basically truly universal soldiers. And like, when we get through this trip, we're going to be able to go like anywhere with all code and heal, you know? And I mean, this is, so you're right. It's an honor. And the emotion part of it is, is the big, is a big pull. You know, yeah. it's a big pull. Yeah. To, yeah to I'm, wondering, I'm wondering what's going to happen when the veil actually lifts and uh, we do see all these entities that are around us. Um, wouldn't that make it kind of awkward having like, you know, an intimate moment with your woman and all of a sudden you look around, there's yeah. like, it's happened. It's happened to us, dude. Like, I'm not kidding. Get done. Come on, we got work to do. <laughs> I mean, it's happened to us, man. And the thing is, is they always, they always. Okay, like so. The first time it happened, well, the, no, 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 it wasn't the first time. The second time it happened, we were in Georgia last summer, right? And we're like, uh, they're here, and they're like, okay, well, you guys need to take your clothes off, get on your knees, put your hands together. And so we did. And then the, the room fills up. Right. And, and I mean, they were translucent. They didn't look like uh, E.T. the movie. They were more humanoid. They were all different sizes and they and they were all like around us, around the bed. 
And I'm like, dude, okay. It's, I'm not. And she's like, Oh, I'm, you know, she starts giggling when she gets scared. And I, and she was shaking. I was shaking, but I was cold as hell. Like they brought in this cold temperature. Right. And so and I'm looking at them like I'm in the hood, right? Like I'm on the street, like I used to be. And I'm like, okay, it's not that I don't trust you. And it's not that I trust you, but I'm keeping my eye on you. This is my woman here, man. Be cool. <laughs> She's like, they just touched me, but not inappropriately. I'm like, okay. And they're like, they just touched me, man. But, it, but so I, I think that's what, you know, that's what you're talking about. That's what's happening to me. Uh, you know, now, is it always figures? No, when I got into this new apartment a few days ago, it was white mist, like little clouds in the room moving across. And I'm like, okay, did that just happen? And then I see another, one. okay, that just happened. Last night it started happening when I was laying in bed and, and I had a bunch of stuff happen. But, but yeah, I think that's, that's what's going to happen. We're going to start slowly seeing, and people were talking about it too. I, I've talked to many people and they're saying like, Things I'm seeing this, I'm seeing that, but it's not necessarily humanoid. You know what I mean? Or right. even even ET looking. It could just be a mist or a cloud or dots or that type of thing. What I'm waiting for is you know you're in the moment, you're with your woman, and you finish, and all of a sudden you hear all this. Woo! Yeah! <laughs> well, they do have they do have a sense of humor. I will say that. Yeah, yeah. And I think I think the emotion thing. I want to go back to that for a second because. You know, I spent uh, what the last two and a half years, you know, just out of the suitcase, just no, you know, no money and just doing keep broadcasting, keep broadcasting. We got your back. I'm like, man. So I would always have these come to Jesus meetings with him. And and I'd be like, man, I'm I'm hungry. My I don't have any clothes. I don't have transportation. I'm doing what I'm told. What the fuck is going on? And I'm sorry. I love you. But you know what? I'm fucking tired, you know. And that emotion that it, almost like anger would would actually go into my prayer, or go into my request. And I every single time, man, the next day, boom, it would I'd get like a, a catch a lightning bolt. Somebody would send me a thousand dollars. That happened one time. And I was like a thousand dollars. At that point, I never got any any contribution more than 50 bucks. And the next day, boom, a thousand. I'm like, holy crap, what am I doing here? You know, but that you're right. That emotion, this is this is one of our, uh, or maybe even the main contribution we're bringing to this expansion of the universe. It is it is channeling that into creation, creative uh, flow. You know, and it works. Yes, emotion is huge, and that's that's really the key to making and manifesting. Honestly. Yeah. And of course, what is the number one emotion? Love. I mean, that's that's the most important thing that's going on right now. That's why when we, uh, you know, watch the mainstream media, what that's the last thing they show is there's anything but love. You look at the movies that are in the theater, all this fear propaganda crap or stuff that supports yeah. the military industrial complex. And, you know, it's a bunch of crap out there. Um, True. So focus on the love, everyone. That's all you need to do. Everything else will take yeah. care of itself. And so here's a subject I think maybe you can help some people with too. Um, so, you know, whether it's the New Zealand thing, Sandy Hook, the Las Vegas thing, you know, or even just more subtle, you know, the subtle things that, that they plant in the, in the uh, mainstream media every day, which includes the internet people, by the way. And just because some, someone says they're a light worker site doesn't mean they are. Okay. But yeah. my point is, you know, I and, and I saw it with the New Zealand thing. OK, and we all know that there is in the physical world, there is things that just don't make any sense. I mean, it's just like it rips your heart out. But how how do we deal with that? How do we deal? Because I saw a lot of people with the New Zealand thing really getting pulled into it. And I'm thinking, wow, man, I don't know what to do. But I know for myself what to do, which is, you know, I, I know that I know in the in the, in the reality of it no one got hurt whether it was a false flag and everybody was an actor or it wasn't because we are divinity you know period and sure. and i go on about my business but how do you how do you how do you keep from getting sucked into that because i see a lot of people doing that you know if it were up to me i would just focus on love and light 24 7 but because i have a responsibility to people that are just waking up within 5d um, I try to cover everything. You know, it's it's like for a lot of people that that went through 9-11, that was their awakening. What's going on right now, especially through the QAnon movement, which I do follow, 
Um, it's called the Great Awakening, and I find it absolutely fascinating. Um, and if you look at some of the the you know leaders of this genre, you know uh, James Gilliland, um, Jenna Pixie, Wilcock, we all follow QAnon. Um, there's something right about that vibration. And right now with Pluto and Capricorn, the vibration of truth, love, and light is so powerful. So if you can't feel that discernment within yourself, dig a little deeper because it's there. Um, yeah. So what I end up doing though is um, I, I try to find the good in everything that's out there. And right now with this whole New Zealand thing, the latest thing I saw on there was, uh, as a matter of fact, I shared the video privately with a couple people on Facebook, but they show this video of, the cartridges disappearing from the gun in midair. It was CGI. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's and then this guy ended up doing a uh, video. Computer. Yeah. What about CGI? Yeah. yeah, computer graphic generated. And, yeah. 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 So uh, some guy did did a uh, video where he took a water gun and he laid over the graphics for cartridges being shot out of the water gun and added the sound effects and he basically made the same thing within two minutes. Now, whether this, that was real or not, I'm not going to say yes or no definitively, but I want ultimately people to question everything. And that's what this whole QAnon movement is, is basically, basically questioning everything. And what's going to happen is people are going to eventually question, why am I here? What is my life purpose? And that's yeah. where we come in. All of us come in. And what I appreciate the most are the people that are basically hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil, that are just holding space right now and there's so many people out there they don't need to do a darn thing hold that space for us while we go into the trenches and do the dirty work we're bringing yeah. a lot of people back with us though yeah and i think that's i think that that way of saying it is right because like the old buddha quote uh you know don't 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 believe anything i say don't believe anything from anybody but yourself even me, I forget how the, how he said. Even it. if you're the minority of one, the truth is still the truth. I think that was Gandhi that said that. But um, yeah, I, I agree with that the, that thought a lot too. Well, I mean, yeah, because because look, I, I look at the I, I'm I I keep up with everything like you do, and I but I always at the end of the day say I don't trust any of it. I trust me. I trust my brothers and sisters. Because everything has been a program up to this point. Why would it change? But I do agree with you that that this whatever the whatever the force is, there is a higher degree every day of, of love and light. You know, I what I, where I get frustrated is the way I look at it is I don't care who you are. If you're a leader, if you're a real leader and you and you know your divinity then why not have the balls? And I'm not knocking Trump or anybody. I'm saying anybody, anybody, even if they're a mid-level leader, why not? And you have you have uh, access to what has been undisclosed. Uh, and there's so many different parts of that subject matter there. Uh, then why wouldn't you just stand up and say it? You know, what the hell are you afraid of? Uh, if anything, the universe is going to shine its ever love and light on you for having the balls to get up there and say, hey, we got a secret space program. Hey, there's pedophilia running there's through the Vatican. There is a reason for that. And uh, like like Q says, trust the plan. And I'm noticing in the uh, comments, there's a lot of Q followers here, too. But uh, Q says, trust the plan. And basically, like right now, for example, the one thing that would topple down uh, the liberals, the, uh, the left, would be the um, release of the FISA memos. But why do it now? He, of course, it, the longer he waits, the, the closer it gets to, I believe, the primaries uh, for the uh, begin in February of 2020. The closer you get to the primaries, the closer you want to release the FISA memo, which will topple down the whole house of cards, Hillary, Obama, every everybody underneath. Um, and it, it'll, it'll be the great awakening at that point. So in regard to what you're saying, Everything has its time. You have to trust the plan. It's all going to come out. There's a Q map that's actually out there. That includes 5D Earth. <laughs> uh, it's a, yeah, it's, it's pretty amazing. And it shows how everything is tied together. Um, but it is called the Great Awakening. And you, you do have to trust the plan. Sometimes Q will say things. As a matter of fact, I, I follow In Pursuit of Truth, uh, uh, 1776 on YouTube. He does the best analysis of uh, each day's uh, Q drops, and he's humorous. Uh, he's a great guy, Sir Sir uh, Sir Patrick Mack. 
um, is the guy that that does it. But uh, he's he's great. He's uh, very informative. He breaks down all the Q posts really well. And uh, yeah. but what he was mentioning today was that um, sometimes Q will put out dates because whenever he puts out a date, the left is watching. The the, the deep the deep state is watching. So whenever he puts out a date, it forces them to do something on on or by that date. So that's when we see generally false flags happening. I've or, seen it. I've or seen that. I've seen somebody, that. Yeah. you know. So when I, I've, I've seen that the the uh, correlation with the dates, and I think yeah. I, I've. Just wrote that down, but because I don't always pay attention to what channel I'm on. But yeah, Lori just sent the link to QAnon on uh, yeah. QAnon.pub in the in the chat. Um, and and also I think the distinction too. And that's where I get confused sometimes too when they use the term left because because deep state. I think to me because you know we know that it would it was both sides of the aisle. Definitely, you know, we know Definitely. With the, the bushes and and so yeah. on and pain and. and well, the cocaine cowboys, you know, they rob me. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, it's, and I can understand that just like you can't have this massive instantaneous, I mean, until we're ready, instantaneous love and light bomb hit the earth or, or disclosure of, of who, what we really are, because it would, or even the physical aspect, the upgrade in a snap, because it would, it would fry our brains, you know? Yeah. And the same yeah. thing. The same thing from a, you know, an analogy standpoint too. Like I can understand if it freak a lot of people out, you know, I, I know, I mean, it would, you know, Hey, right, uh, we were the that's the importance of these photons coming in right now. As we're entering the photon belt, it's really shifting everything right now. It's, it's, it's elevating consciousness. It's, it's part of the transformation that's happening right now. And as I mentioned, it's bringing in that truth vibration with Pluto and Capricorn. Now I know you're going to be talking a little about Pluto, uh, astrology with other guests but my, my view on astrology is it shows us cycles of time uh the last time pluto was in capricorn was in the 1700s during both the french and american revolutions what's going on right now revolution yeah. here in america revolution in france right now these are cycles of time it's 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 a gives us a clock to go by basically um we're looking at the precession of the equinoxes right now we're at the end of that that's showing us this is that time the end of the fifth world of five worlds that mayan were talking about we're in it right now that's mm -hmm. all astrology that's showing us the importance of where we are where we're heading but we're taking it one step further we're going beyond it after this this is the last time we'll need it but it's giving us that timetable to learn yeah. from and those that don't learn from history are doomed to repeat it and i think too the other thing we look this whole this whole trip you got to be open you can't just be open. Okay, the it, uh, the light is infinite. Well, you know what? We're we're not, and with our cognitive abilities, it's just a human aspect can ever understand the yin yang. Okay, until everything, like you said, all the veils gone and, and everything is around us. But it's also the other side. You know, we got to be open to everything. Yep. We we got we can't say oh well the the dark is limited here or it's separate from me. You know, no, 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 you can't do that. But the, the other thing I think example is, is right here in the comments. Lisa Baggio Lenin is saying, are we seriously talking about QAnon here? There's something within QAnon that makes her feel very uncomfortable. And there's something she probably needs to look at within that. Yeah, we are talking about it. But, and to Lisa, you know, I'm not Republican or Democrat. I am neither. I, I stand in the vibration of truth, love, and light. That's it. Well, and I think the other thing, and this is where I go sometimes, because I don't, I don't, I look at the stuff to take the information in, and then I go about my business working on Todd the Universe because I know that's the best contribution I can make to the whole to the whole game. But, but, I, but you have to think too, <clears throat> wherever you go, you always have a little bit of this and a little bit of that and a little bit of this. So to sit here and think that you know my stepfather was in the CIA for twenty five years. Both of my parents worked for the government. Uh, my stepfather was a very good man. Okay. He was an, he was an excellent man. Uh, and, and, uh, you know, what I'm trying to say is there's light workers everywhere. You know, if there's X percent here, there's X percent over there. So yeah. faith is faith, man. Faith is faith. And like the universe told me a long time ago, we're going to give you 90% and the other 10% is up to you. <laughs> and, yeah. and it's, and they, and they told me that's never going to change. You know, because I'll give me a sign, like you said, and you get the sign. But you still like, okay, was that a coincidence? You know, I mean, you know, it, it, is this real? But I think that's another thing that's happening. The magic, 
the magic, the miracles, the manifestation, the materialization, uh, it's being reciprocated now. It's like all this work we've done is starting to, you're actually getting it back. We're actually getting it, you know? It's quicker happening. than ever too, as manifestations are happening quicker and faster than ever when you're centered and grounded, especially. Yeah. Well, like even, and, and everything is is a micro of the macro, right? So like Morgan yeah. and I on the, on the island, we, we went into this thing. We went right into these initiations, like boom. At the same time, we're having these Lemurian interdimensional experiences in, in the sacred sex vibration, you know? And I mean, I mean, I'm looking at her and all of a sudden she turns into a, a 20 year old priestess, you know, right. in, a, in, in a hula and I'm this young kid, you know, I'm like, Oh, I'm going to stay like this. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But, it, but the thing is, is like, like when I was talking about the, one of the experiences, we were at a point where, you know, I had like 120 bucks. It's not cheap here, you know? And, and I'm like, okay, well, let's just get in the car. And, and we had gotten, a visit from these golden beings and they said look everything's okay we got your back just let go you know so we jump in the car and the next thing you know we end up at this place and the slave's like okay you can stay here for 400 a week and, and nice. then here we go right and we're like okay all utilities with the internet i'm hooked up with an ethernet i don't have internet problems anymore and they're just the way i get it it's like you said it's a little piece at a time it's a yeah. little bit at a time because if it all came in like they talk about this Here's another subject that I that I, I'd like to I'd like to integrate within myself because it causes me a problem. And that's this whole this whole thing about financial reset. Mm -hmm. Now I could see, I could yeah. see coming out and saying, look, okay, look, all debt's gone. Period. We're starting over. I could see that. I think that could be uh, you know, processed by the majority. But to come out and say, here's three hundred thousand dollars for everybody. You know, I think that would be like mass chaos. You know, is it a program? Is it is it real or is it somewhere in between? I've been following Nasara Jasara for a long time. It, it actually began in the late 90s, as far as I can, Leo Wanta and all this stuff. And uh, it's always been a lot of hot air and bullshit, in my opinion. I hate to say that. And I would yeah, love to come to fruition, but I've been watching it for so long that yeah, i'm with you yeah I, with I, you. I just don't I'm see that happening. You. I, yeah. you know what i do see happening though um is a collapse of the roman catholic church and their net worth being distributed to everyone to create instant abundance that i do Dude, see. that 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 and rightfully so my, my my mom lives in houston and the church that's around the corner from her house brings in a million dollars a month dude a million a month. Yeah. So I could see that happening. I could I could see the forgiveness of debt by the vibration raising. And I'm with you, not just the Catholic Church, but I but I think the financial, the the, the destruction of the financial system, you know, it's all coming see down. That. Yeah. It's I all coming down. That. I told I talked about that with Pluto entering Capricorn back in uh 2008. Immediately I put out a, a video on um the N5D YouTube channel saying uh banking collapse announces the beginning of the golden age which is true because this is what's happening we're seeing the collapse of money government and religion right before our eyes right now yeah. and it's up yeah. to us to really decide where are we going to go from here yeah yeah yeah. that's exactly right and i think that's the important thing that's that's the thing that's as i get it if i could s explain and i'm not saying i'm anybody because i'm not i just what i do is put people out there that's it i'm a producer Mm -hmm. But in my personal communion, with the, seven years, <laughs> but, you know, in my personal communion with the seven for the seven years, my personal communion with the universe, this me, this is just my universe. What I've gotten is it's all on you. Like you've you're we're giving you the Akashic. We're giving you the life experience of these incarnations you've had. You combine that and take sole responsibility and move forward and whatever you move forward your intention your your heart of your intentions intention of your heart your actions all the alignment of mind body soul uh, that's what's going to happen and i'm like talking to the universe okay so are you telling me that i'm god of the whole thing you are. that i can and i and i have this is just me one yeah. soul can create can create collective change and we've and i know if you look at it you mentioned gandhi a while ago there, and you don't have to be known. 
That's the way I understand it. It works through the non-physical, which what which is why I think the internet is so powerful. Oh yeah. It's, it's, yeah. And you know, to people that I highly encourage anyone that's listening or watching right now uh, to get out there and put your word out there. The more you put it out there, the more the more that it actually brings the reality into fruition right now. And don't be afraid. Like for example, the person that puts out a, a makes their own YouTube channel puts out a video that only gets seen by 10 people. What if that one, one of the 10 people ended up changing the world for the better for all of us? I mean, Dude. what, what you're doing with your 10 followers or 10 people that view, viewed your video is no more important than somebody watching one of our videos. I guess tens of thousands of views, everyone Dude, right. together and we're all making the same kind of impact just on different scales, but it's neither impact is any more important than the other. Oh my God. You're like me. I feel like I did last night when I levitated. <laughs> my, whole back is, my whole back is tingling. Uh, yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. And, 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 you know, another thing I got in my personal communion with the universe a long time ago was that the universe doesn't miss a thing. The universe does not miss a thing. And if you don't get credit for it here in the mm -hmm. physical city touch five senses, you will get, you will be reciprocated equally. And, and, and I think this is what's so fascinating to me is that we have all this information. Everybody's getting it there. there some people are coming into it. Like you said, a lot of people are waking up and, and, and you. So you've got to present what you do uh, across the board on N5D. Yep. And so it, it doesn't even matter. But the point is, is we got all this stuff up here. We went through this period of, oh, my God, uh, I'm talking to Jesus. Oh, my God, I got the, the Pleiadians talking to me. I'm a channel for this and I can do that to uh, I'm still Todd, uh, you're still Greg, and we're conscious here for a reason. And maybe our duty is to integrate all that stuff, the physical, the non-physical, and actually become these supernatural beings in the physical matter. Like that's mind blowing, you know? I'm ready. That's I'm, I'm ready. ready. <laughs> but you know, what we're looking at is a transition period. No one actually knows when the event's gonna happen. I've never been given dates for it. I just know it's gonna happen in my lifetime. But, you know, during this transition, as we're watching money, government and religion collapse, this is what I, I would look, personally love to see. And I, I wrote an article about this, too. I'd love to see a council of elders replace all governments and we can vote on them every week if we want to. Their only job is to work in humanity's best interest and be 100 percent transparent. So what did you do this week? Well, I brought that water powered car invention into fruition. What did you do this week? Well, I made a uh, Li-Fi instead of Wi-Fi, which is hundred percent safe. And any, anybody can have wire, wireless internet anywhere. What did you do? Well, I brought free energy to the world. That's the kind of things that we want people to do. And we could turn, we could turn the United Nations into a United Nations of elders where you have representatives just trading ideas. But I would also suggest that we all learn a common language. I don't care if it's, uh, Russian or Slovakian, <laughs> you know, we all need to learn one kind of language so we can communicate with one another. Yeah. yeah. And real time, real yeah, time. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. It was real time. Yeah. There's oh, a bunch yeah. of other ideas I had with that, but uh, you know, the council of elders to replace all governments, that would be the best. No more parties, two party system. No, no more divide and conquer. Everything's transparent. <clears throat> yeah. Everything. Have you, have you heard of, uh, because I don't want to forget to ask you, Puja Network, World Puja Network. I've heard of it. I I, I don't. Way I, back, I haven't been there. Back. Yeah, I haven't seen it okay. in a while. It was really, it, it really had a run from 2000 to 2012. Yeah, yeah. I mean, okay, I'll talk to you about that later. Okay. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it was the third largest internet radio station of any genre in the U.S. Uh, wow. Because of two. Yeah, I, I want to talk to you about that. Off, okay. Off. So yeah, man, this is cool, man. All right, you, we got another twenty minutes or so. You cool? Sure. Yeah, definitely. definitely. Yeah. So yeah, what have, what have we missed here? So uh, yeah, it's you know I think no matter what's going on, it's all on us, you know. And 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 so you know it's almost like uh, you know we grow up and we don't want to take certain levels of responsibility, you know. And we've all been there. You know, in a relationship, on a job, or you know, I'll delegate this, delegate this. It, 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 uh, you know, what I'm trying to say is, is that this is this is our moment, man. I mean, we are, like you said, we are like royalty. We're like the darlings of the universe. They're sitting on the edge of the seat, saying, "What are they going to do with this? 
what we see as a burden is a huge blessing and opportunity and we earned it. And, and God, you know, man, I, I, I'm in the human is the hero. I'm in love with the human being. I do not want to be off this planet. And I want to, I want to be here when Greg turns into that kid, that, that version of him that's on the refrigerator and, 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 you know, has, has a, uh, uh, you know, alchemic sparks flying out of his fingers, like the new Merlin in the new age, you know, I mean, the whole world is healed. I would love that. But ideally I don't want everyone to know that it was me, but I just put it out there that it would be me, but maybe it'll be somebody else. And maybe I'll deny it. I don't, I don't want to take credit for any of that. I, you know, I just, and whoever does is that first person to uh, open up all the codons on in their DNA, the beneficial ones, please do it, do it, do it, do it. Help the world, help mother earth, help everybody that's, that's hurting and needs help. That's, that's well, what, what I think, you do with it. What I, part of the great example that you said, and I, I and I'm a big believer in, even if you don't say a damn thing, anybody the it's the energy of your example your exemplary exemplification of life of of you know that actually that actually does the work but here we're listening to somebody who has who's who's and this is what i find very powerful somebody who's saying i'm working on this i believe i can do it boom whoa because that's that's if you because that's it right there that's yep. it one believes they can do it the next person comes in the next person comes in that itself builds a little collective uh, you know emergence of this of this new uh, and, and expanded thought which is I've what documented this everything i've been doing with my dna i've documented all the way through um so if i end up disappearing and <laughs> just becoming a light body people will know exactly what i did how to get there and how to do it um one of the things and i agree completely with what what you're saying um, sometimes our thoughts are the most important things and you don't even have to put it out there and let anyone else know what I end up doing after my walk of gratitude, I call a love bubble meditation. And, and what it is, it's really simple. I just envision that there's this huge bundle of love around me, love energy. And I ask my posse, creator, source, universe, spirit guides, guardian angels, friends and family on both sides of the veil, galactic neighbors and friends, higher self and mother earth to join me by magnifying their loving, healing energy from their heart center and expand it out as far as they can throughout the planet, galaxy, universe, multiverse, and omniverse. And when we're walking the beach, we're carrying that energy with us. And when I'm looking at everybody, the last thing I say when I'm doing that um, meditation is we're all family. So when I look at everybody, I don't care what race, color, age, whatever you are, you're all family. And when you look at people as being your family, like you might see an old man over there, oh, there's Uncle Kevin or a young little girl there. Oh, there's my little niece, uh, Janice, or whatever. You know, you, when you look at them as being family, it instantly changes that energy and you feel that love and you're sending that love. And it's something that you can do no matter where you are, in a mall, in a park, driving down the road, sending out that love to people. No one has to know but you, but you're changing the energy of the world by doing that. That's a fact. That's a fact. And one of the, one of the, you know, one of the greatest, uh, you know, honors, blessing, and sitting in this chair that I've sat in for 900, what did I say, 927 shows? I don't remember. But uh, has yes, been I, these stories of these people, mostly feminine, okay, that have been doing this, what you're describing, for 15 and 20 years, man. I mean, I keep going back to the story. Maria Shashan from Israel came on for the first time, for the first time, like a many of these ever on camera, right? Not just uh -huh. on the show, but uh, about three months ago. And she's been doing this work. I mean, the story is the same, right? But this is like 1990. Like, okay, I'm getting out of this marriage. I'm, I'm here in the universe. They're telling me, go do this. And the family tells me she's crazy. You know, all the stuff that, that, that the people went through, right? And she says, you know, on the show, she goes, six, Todd, until six months ago. Now, she's doing grid work in Jerusalem and in different parts of the world. And, you know, and she said, until six months ago, I didn't know there were other people like me, right? These people have been doing this stuff in in anonymity for all these years and in and, and it worked and it still works and what you're saying is 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 the most powerful thing we could do it's the the most powerful thing we could do did yeah. you was it you that said when you ask for abundance i think it was i listened yeah. when you ask yeah. for abundance, it's not 
just abundance and everything that's good in life. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Be, it's be it's specific. For everybody. <laughs> it's not just yeah. hey, give me a house and a paycheck. It's like it's like for everybody. It's kind of like that. That's the way I see it. It's like you know, the woman you were talking about sounds like she was probably from the Pluto and Leo generation, which is the generation before us. Um, that would be like Barbara Marciniak, Jose Arguez, um, John Major Jenkins, um, a lot of people that are, they, they were born from the years 1936 until I believe 1957 or 58, mm -hmm. something like that. That's the Pluto and Leo generation. I have two older sisters that are Pluto and Leo. You and I are the Pluto and Virgo generation. We came in after that, but the Pluto and Leo generation is the generation that if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't be here right now because they held that energy. But like you were talking about, they're the ones that held that energy. Like for example, in the 1980s, I was playing lead and rhythm guitar in several hard rock bands. The last thing on my mind was centering and grounding. I was doing everything other than that. But in the meanwhile, mm -hmm. this Pluto and Leo generation out there holding space for us and maintaining that for us to give us that opportunity to do what we're doing right now. So we waited as long as we could to get into the Pluto and Virgo uh, uh, generation. Then we said, screw it, we're jumping in. <laughs> we're in and here we are right now. And that's 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 our generation right here, the uh, yours and mine. I know a lot of people that are listening are probably subsequent generations after that as well. But that's it, it's fascinating to see how these generational differences and what they're doing in each, and how each generation is contributing to the awakening. What, and so what time period was the... Uh the uh, Pluto Virgo. Where, where did that run? I believe 57 or 58 until like 1972, 74. There's a couple times where different planets transit ins and out, in and out. So you might have uh, Pluto in Libra and then back to Pluto in Virgo. And then that'd be, like 30, that'd be like 20. The next one would be like 25 to 35. And that makes sense because when I look at the uh, demographics of Sology, uh, I just looked at it uh, about two days ago and it's just like exploded all, you know, like, I think there's like almost 80 countries now. And it's like, nice. but you see this, you see this, you know, it's a graph and you see this. It used to be a really big fat part was like 45 to 65 uh -huh. or maybe 45 to 55. Yeah. Now it's this other one's coming up and it's like 35 to 45. Love it. Love it. And, it, nice. and, and, and also the proportion of male female in that category is, is like 60, 40. You know where the other ones were like 75 25 or 70 mm -hmm. 30. yeah so it's it's coming yeah, more, and more men are starting to awaken you know basically this genre you know every time i've had like an m5d conference it's been ma mainly probably 75 percent women and 25 percent men and maybe you know a good majority of the men were gay that came there so out of straight men there was hardly any of us um yeah. but now we're you know People like you and I are coming out there and we're telling people, you know, especially the straight men, own that divine feminine within you. It's not going to make you any less of a man. As a matter of fact, your woman's going to love you even more um, by, yeah. by owning that. Get out there and, and, and feel from your heart. Talk from your heart. You know, be, be the man, but own the divine feminine. Find that balance within. And my daughter is the one that taught me that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. well, you know, I learned from Morgan. And it, it was yeah. a hell of a ride to, to like go of all that stuff. And I've talked about it a lot, but, but I'm on the other side of it now. And, uh, you know, I mean, it, it's, it, it's, it, it, I've watched the masculine, you know, and I guess I've, you know, I, I guess I was, it, it was as individual goes, it was a collective, but over the last couple of months, something has happened. Something really has happened. And what you're saying is true. And I remember in late 2015, when it all started cutting out, the divine feminines landed she's here mama's home and then there was like this you know evolution in 16 and 17 and going into 18 and it started out with hey we ain't taking your shit anymore hey you know what you know it was the, the me too and all and, and they were like and then they came that energy came and it was like nurturing like holding space like hurry up guys yeah you know we're yeah. ahead of you and then something over the last couple of months now where you know the you know i've seen men, men are crying they're saying Good. hey man uh this is what happened to me and hey this is how i feel and and i've seen it happen and i'm seeing that animosity go away the war is over you know 
And so this is what I think is is so exciting is that indicates then that there's a there is a collective balance happening and whoa I mean if it if it work if it works the way it does inside of us what do you think is going to happen outside of us Oh yeah you know you know it's it's all about finding that balance within you know, my daughter showed me that I, I, I needed to have that 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 aspect of myself that I haven't seen since I was a kid. You know, Dude, because, that's, you know as, as, as young boys, you know, we're taught, oh, be like, take it like a man, don't cry, big boys don't cry, and all this crap. But uh, you know, it, it's funny. Yesterday, I, I did a show with uh, Carrie Ann Sanders, and she's Pluto and Scorpio, just like my daughter. Uh, she's like thirty four. My daughter's twenty five, or approaching twenty five. Um, so they're in the same age group. So I, I understand what you're talking about with the age groups that you're seeing over there. Yeah. Where was I going on this? Um, uh, we're talking about the balance of the feminine. I'm just oh, yeah, amazing. Yeah, thank you for uh, bringing that back. Yeah. Uh, so what the most men are afraid of right now is the divine feminine. That scares the shit out of them because they see it as a sign of weakness. And it's not. It's a strength. Own it. Own it. Find that balance. Yeah, that's very true. And, and and I've said this many times and it took me a while. Uh, it took me uh, like three years before I understood what had happened. But when I was on the street, when I woke up for those two years, there was a voice. There was a, a you know, not a literal voice. It wasn't like clear audience, but it was speaking to me. Right. And and it was the most powerful thing. It kept me going. And I later on found out and figured out that was the goddess energy, man. You know, whether it was external or perceived external or not, it was me. And yeah. and it was, like the, it was the part of me that never let go. Like, get get your ass up and go get up the next day. You can do this. You know, and you have these thoughts of, man, I'm, I'm ready to end this thing. I'm writing a suicide note. I mean, you know, the hell with this, you know. No, you keep going. You've got something. You've got purpose yeah, and you meaning. Do. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? So um, that to me. You didn't give up, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well. <laughs> but how many people you've helped since then? Oh, this, yeah, it's just a, it's just an honor to be part of the team, man. And yeah, be in oh, a, yeah. In we're the, all, you know, we're all in this together. Yeah. I know. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's it's just a, and it's and it's amazing too to see, like you were talking about the ripples, and and mm -hmm. and, and you're so right about you know, and I've seen it happen, man. I, it's like a, it's a, like Morgan always says, a copy is a copy is a copy. But I'll see somebody get inspired by you or me or somebody else. And they'll say, oh, I started this group or I'll see them make a video, you know, and then you'll see somebody in the comments go boom. Right. They'll like light up and say, yeah. thank you. You're, you're saying what, what I've been trying to say or you you it's this is weird. Are you talking to me? You know, I mean, it's it, it, the numbers don't matter. The numbers really don't matter. They don't. Uh, they really, they don't, you know. You're going to reach wow. whoever you're supposed to reach right now. And the more they suppress us and shadow ban us, the more they're going to want to find that information. They'll come out seeking us. They'll be looking oh, yeah. for us. Yeah, so. Yeah, and that's and that's what I want to talk to you about. You know, I talked to you about it last time I, I saw you, and we've had some some issues. You know, how do you navigate it? Yep. Oh, oh yeah. Last, Day, I really started to when it was here, but over the last 10 days, we've had some major breakthroughs, and, and, the, and the time is here. And, mm -hmm. and you're right, you know, because uh, the more I do this, the more they'll come in and start to press me and thank, thank everybody that through word of mouth, because they don't get the notifications, you know, the more light that you, the more you, you know, and you've been through it. So yeah. it's I, time to make the leap and, uh, and I see it happening already, and, and and I'm being told it'll just it'll just happen, just like yeah. me hit up, and we hit this rhythm, and I mean I'm exploding. I'm seeing a lot of stuff as I'm talking to you of what's going to happen. But I, but I think the difference now is we all can we're we're not trying to hold it and control it and stage it, and we're just like you said, we're just allowing it to flow, and and it's, it's funny. You know, I, I look at, I have a program on my website called Awstats, AW Stats, and I can see what countries are visiting me. I have people from the Vatican City visiting every month. <laughs> I'm thinking, okay, why are they checking out N5D? Mm. <laughs> I thought that was kind of funny to see that there, um, especially when they have all of the, 
you know, library of Alexandria in their basement, all the Mayan codices and everything else that they've stolen from everybody else there. They have the world's largest, uh, most powerful telescope called Lucifer of all things in Arizona. You know, and here they are visiting in 5G. Okay. That, 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 that takes, look, that's kind of goes back to what the transmission I got last night was about bringing everything into your heart equal. That, that, that's probably the institution that I have the biggest issue with where I have to go in and say, okay, you know, everything, whatever it looks like, there's always another side to it. And you brought up nine 11. Yep. So nine 11 was on the surface, what it was, you know, but it, you're right. It woke up so many people because that was the first stage of, to me, uh, awakening for, for so many people was like, uh, this didn't happen. You know, this didn't happen. Uh, and then they start looking under the covers of everything else, and then boom, here we are. Yeah. And I would not, I don't know where we've been in our incarnations. I don't know for sure. I mean, we all receive different things, past lives or whatever, but I cannot imagine there being a better inc incarnation or realm to be or team to be on than the one we're on now. Right now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we we are going to look back at these days, even the days that we were struggling when you were at your lowest point not too long ago. Uh, and you look at the turnaround you made and to help so many people. And you're going to look back and say, oh, my God, I can't believe how many people, thousands, tens of thousands multiplied on that from all the people that they're going to be helping. You know, yeah. hundreds yeah. of thousands and millions of people as it snowballs, you know, um, it's going to be amazing to look back. But I know that you probably have the same attitude as I do is, you know, basically, I don't want any accolades. I've got a job to do right now. Um, and I'll look back someday and, and say, yeah, I did the best I could. But right now I got a lot of work to do. Right. That's it. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I mean, God, I'm glad you said that, you know, I, and and I and I have some intel that I think does apply to this time. And this this came to me. It was told to me on a personal level, but. But it came to me when I first started walking the streets. So this is seven years ago. Mm -hmm. And he's like, oh, uh, here's Sology. It's going to be big. And I'm like, I don't care. I mean, I got my, I got other problems. But no, you do this. You ride every day. And so I did it. Wait, wait, wait. Said, wait. Was, that a, was that a galactic download that you got? Or was that a, a guide or that told you? It was to a, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that came, it came in. Uh, it, it, this is crazy. It was given no, to not. me. It was given to me on Morgan's birthday in 2012, so, uh, March the 10th, 2012. And I actually took two days to start the group. Or given it was to by whom? Well, it was, it was Archangel Michael. Okay. That, that, that essence, what it, you know, and that okay. labels be much for me. And but specifically told you to name it Sology. Yeah. It said, it awesome. said, yeah, it said, here's, here's Sology. And, and its definition is the other side of truth. So the first thing I did was I looked in the dictionary and there wasn't any anything. And so, uh, but anyway, what I was getting at is, it would, then they would come in and, and all this other stuff happened. You know, all these other uh, divine essences that came in and I'd spend two weeks with this one, two weeks with that one. And so anyway, uh, but at one point they said to me, you're going to bust your ass till you're about... 57 and a half, 58, 58 and a half. And then these, then the young people, now this was a, to me a very collective message. Then these young people, probably that 25 to 35 bracket we were talking about, are going to come in and just bull rush it. And you guys' work is done pretty much, you know? You're passing the torch on at that point to the younger. Which would, which would yeah. coincide with what's happening. That's what I'm getting at. That's why it, it, to me, it, yeah, and to me, and see, I love that story. That that's all. In 2008, I had this galactic download. It's the only way I can call it. Where I got all this information at once. At the time, I was a child and family therapist working with at-risk youth. I had a patent pending on a program I wrote designed to help families who are at risk of dissolution, children going through the reunification process, and for parents in need of parenting classes. It got approved by the area's largest human services facility. And I was working that in a three county area, but I knew there was something more I had to do. And I, it was after I watched The Secret. I bought the DVD for it. I watched it. And I just, I remember that night as clear as a whistle. I dropped to my knees and I said, I give up. I surrender. What is it, universe, I need to do? And that's when I got this galactic download. And it just flooded me with all this information. 
you need to build a website, which I did the first, and you can see this on the Wayback Machine. I built it from scratch, HTML, complete scratch. Oh my God. HTML. Um, they said, here's the name for your website. Just like you were given the name Sology, I was given N5D and I'm thinking, yeah, right. Like that's available. And it was, uh, they said, you're going to have to do interviews and talk shows and stuff like that. You're going to have to put your voice out there. I'm like, you got the wrong person. I'm an introvert. <laughs> They're like, no, this is, you have to do this. And that's why I agreed so quickly to come on your show. And I'm going to be doing that much more often. Uh, I need to, we all need to get our voices heard. Everyone that's listening, get out there and make a, a Facebook live or do whatever you have to do, make your voice heard. But I completely get what you're saying. Cause I had that galactic download. Um, yeah. It was given all that information as well. So yeah. It, yeah, it was what was trippy and i'll tie this into what we were talking about before we came on camera about the this yeah the monad uh so it was on her birthday three years before three years before i'd meet her three right three and a half years mm -hmm. we became facebook friends I, I saw this the other day she put it up on on march the 15th of 2015. her birthday's march the 10th I was given Sology on March the 10th. I started Sology Group on March the 12th, and we became friends on March the 15th. Three, okay, it's three years later. So, so uh, yeah, and so what right, I Tom, got Tom uh, just out of synchronicity. My daughter's mother's birthday is March 10th, also. So just yeah, yeah. well, that and that, and those are the that's the cookie crumb trail home. I mean, that's that it's it, it's very important that we point those yeah. things out. Yes. Uh, so, you know, so, okay. So I was telling you before the show that more, when Morgan was here about a month ago, we were laying in bed or doing our normal thing. We put our hands together and we were told step out of your body together. And in, in, in other words, detach from your physical body, detach from the feeling, your physical feeling. And we did, and we're in the circle and there's family with us. And they tell us that this, We've met, we meet with you all the time, all the time. Uh, this is the team, right? Here. You said they were translucent uh, beings, right? No, no, this this was more eyes closed, but we both had the same experience kind of okay. thing. Okay. Another one they've appeared in the room, right? Okay. But this right. was different. This one said, now we're in this place that we found or that found us, where I told you on this organic farm, I can look at the ocean, I can look at the mountains and and, and has been talking to us and all this weird stuff's happening. And this is like right before she's leaving. And, 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 and so one of them stepped up that looked, I said it was Merlin. She said it was Merlin and we didn't say it to each other at the time. We've been meeting, you've been meeting with us every night for a long time. The last time you were conscious of it and you will be from here forward. The last time you were conscious was 60 years ago. You were part of the decision, both of you to come, uh, to do this and make the plan. You were the ones that decided to come down here and incarnate and do this. Right. And so the reason I'm saying this is, is because I'm going to, I'll talk about it more later. Uh, I saw him last night. It happened again. I was by myself. She was there and I haven't talked to her today. And I don't know if she was aware of it, but I will tell you this. I sent her a note at five at six fifteen after I had this experience this morning with the dragons in the circle and all this. And it would have been, three o'clock in the morning over there. And when I sent her the note, she immediately got it. So I have a feeling, you know, I have a feeling, but anyway, so what I was getting at is that Sology really, it went on, went on, and the physical went on for like three years with just me, 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 and building it, people coming in, but it really didn't take off until we physically came together. And then it like appeared before us and said, I, I am my own consciousness now. And, I will, and, and, and it'll be fed by your divine love and other people's divine love. Just keep doing what you're doing. Boom, boom, boom. But then later I got that energetically, this was all, we were, this, this was all done energetically long before it was physically, which, which was validated by the mutual message and, and dimensional experience we had that I described to you, you know, so, and that, and, and, and they also told us this, this is going on everywhere. There's Sologies everywhere in 5Ds. They're everywhere. And, and the real, the real, uh, the mathematical function of it, if you want to put it that way, the sacred geometric equation is the Trinity. So two people come together, you know, they produce a third energy 
out of divine love, out of out of intention of the heart, and it it explodes and begins to just the monkey, the hundredth monkey thing. You know, it's the flower of life thing, right? So, mm -hmm. and I think like this, like us today. I mean, I've been getting chills the whole time. We bring, we 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 collaborate together, not just individuals, but also the the third, the golden child of N five D, the golden child, Sology combine, and it starts to, you know, yeah, make things happen. Yeah. A lot like you said with people doing doing a live, pick up the phone, do a live, and you affect other people, even if a hundred people aren't watching or one person's watching. You know, it's been proven that, for example. Uh, like electricity was discovered, I think six different places at the same time around the world without people conferring with one another. What we're doing is basically drawing from the aether. I'm gar I guarantee other people probably got that message that I got, the, the, the same download. Okay, build the website in 5D, this and that. Somebody else got that Sology uh, download that you got, but we're the ones that actually listened and followed through on it. And the chances are there are other people that followed that maybe got different names other than Sology or N5D uh, and yeah. they're doing whatever they're, they need to do, but we're doing it and we're listening. And that's the importance of listening and making that connection, even surrendering uh, to yeah. creator source universe, whoever you're, you're surrendering to surrendering and asking for, okay, what is it I need to do right now? That's that's what I did last night, man. And, and I will say that, and, it, and I think everybody can vouch for that, but when you do that, you get, you get, you know, in one form or another, you're going to get direction. You're going to get, uh, confirmation one thing i do do want to mention before we get off that i'm just coming to you know uh the realization because it's so difficult to be in in um at least for me you know people that get uh, these and i haven't got what other people got i'm talking channelings transmissions powerful visitations it's a real it's a real challenge to the ego so that's a big part of the trip right and, and I think for myself, I'm okay, I'm okay there, right? Mm -hmm. But one thing I did realize, I was talking to a lady yesterday. Her name was uh, Amira uh, Sophia something. And she's been doing the 20 years, 25 years and all that stuff. She has a, 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 an energy called, an uh, organization called Sophiology. Sophiaology, right? Nice, so your, nice. Uh, but so she was talking to me about, you know, what you eat and you know, part of the conversation uh, and, and just different things. I'm like, no, 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 no. You know, I, I don't I don't relate to that. I lived for two years on the street with McDonald's. I didn't know what I was doing, but I alchemized the food every day and I became more physically healthy. And she said to me, you know, Todd, I'm not I, I agree. I believe you. But there's a lot of people out there that aren't there. They they need to go more basic and however she put it and I said you know what you're right and the reason I'm bringing this up is because because you know when I met Morgan she would tell me about these sisters she had in Australia like 20 25 ladies and she would tell them she was like the soul mother right and she would tell them the day's gonna come I'm getting this she's telling me I'm I would get this and they would say the day's gonna come when you're gonna be so busy you won't know what to do and because she, like many people, she would say, many of these people have been doing this for so long. Why am I doing this? Nobody's listening. You know, why am I posting? And only three people are seeing it. But <laughs> I, I think this is the time now that, A, yes. I need to understand on a personal level, maybe this will help other people that are out there, is that everybody's not. My, I just happen to be in this particular role, and everyone doesn't think the way I do. Everyone doesn't process things the way I do. Keep that in mind. And two, I think it's even more important is the message she got and other people are starting to come out with that message is that we're about to get real busy. Our work is about to the yes. reason we came is about to come to the surface. And that is going to be literally to, you know, whatever the role is, teach people, uh, you know, modalities, processes, nutrition, organic farming, whatever it is, whatever our individual roles. But I, but it's about to get real jiggy, you know. You know, Lin Linda Winger brought up uh, something. She wanted us to talk about tribes. And I just want to touch on that real quickly because right now uh, people are energetically hooking up with one another and people are releasing those who are not of the same vibration. So all I need to say on that is be with those who lift you up, those who inspire you, those who vibrate at the same frequency as you. 
this is your tribe these are your people and that's what we're doing right now uh, they're gonna you're 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 the tribe I'm the tribe we are all tribes and we're all coming together we're vibrating with those who are vibrating at the same frequency and this is more important now than ever especially now that we're um, moving further and further into the photon belt we have all these uh concentric rings of energy coming in we have so many things that are going on around us the schumann resonance has been going off the charts um there's a lot of energy going on so always try to make sure that you can find that time to ground too it's more important than ever to ground right now but find your vibe find find your tribe and they'll find yeah. us yeah that's very true yeah man uh i know we don't have to say anything i know I know, I know we're going to continue to work together. Definitely. And I'm, I'm really uh, feeling it. You know, when I do these shows, I'll see, I, I see things like a, a, a lady a couple of days ago, I actually saw her turn into a, a Lyrian for like a split second. I've seen other things. Grace Lair, someone's disappeared on the show. That was a, something everybody saw. Uh, but, and then for me, it, sometimes I'll be hearing the higher self or another aspect of them. And so this time, this show, I've been like lit up the whole time and, <laughs> and it's almost overwhelming. Yeah. Because I can see, I don't want to say I can see the future. I believe the only prophecy that there is, is just my own is a prophecy of our own life, you know, and I see this thing happening before me and, and I've, I've had, I've come to terms with that type of thing now where I accept it and I don't like, Oh God, let me go make it happen. No, it's going to happen. I feel yep. it. I feel like there's going to be. And All I'm you really got to do is be a good person. You know, these are the five things my, my guides want me to pass along. They, you know, just love first and foremost, love, put love out there. The vibration of love is everything. Um, gratitude, express gratitude as much as you can. I do my walk of gratitude every day. Forgive. Dolores Cannon mentioned that forgiveness is the quickest way to overcome any karma. Perfect. <laughs> Maintain a high vibration is another one. You know, do high vib vibrational things. You know, get out there in nature. Uh, do things that make you happy. And uh, what was the fifth one? High vibration and oh, um, I forgot the fifth. But yeah, those are four that are really good ones anyway. Part of that 3D memory oh, lapse. Oh, yeah. Ground. <laughs> That's it. Grounding. Yeah. Oh, ground. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, man, uh, yeah. If I can do anything for you, let me know. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I'll be reaching out to you about, um, you know, what we talked about a few months ago. Yeah. And uh, anytime you yeah. want to do this again, man, give me a shout. I'm up. Oh, I'd, love, I'd love to. Yeah, I'd love yeah. to. Uh, I'm supposed to have a day off on Wednesday. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that. <laughs> yep. But I was, but I'm going to try to put some uh, time into the schedule because I got, yeah. So yeah, but I would love to do that. Yeah, All right. I think it's, a, I think it's the right time too because, because of what you said about the masculine, what we talked about with the masculine. Uh, you know, it, yeah. The more it's seen, uh, the more we'll step in, a step up. You know, yeah, and be heard. It's yeah. going to happen just by talking about it. Yeah, yeah. I love yeah. you, brother. I, love I really you too, appreciate. Brad. On behalf of everybody, thank you for all the years you've put in. And uh, I look forward to, to talking to you soon. You take care. Well. Thank you for everyone joining us. Uh, check me out on N5D. Yeah, yeah. y'all, N5D on YouTube, N5D uh, website, right? And then also on Facebook, right? You got it, man. Okay, man. Appreciate it.